appreciate you as a voice of reason on both sides of the issue, religious and political. Um, my question, though, is more of historical interpretation, which is that you've t talked a bit about um, American mytho-history and the Enlightenment and in Protestant um, reasoning or argument, if, if you will. Um, but we share that with, say, France and much of the post-Enlightenment world. So my question is, on what point do you think the United States diverges from those other countries in the endurance of <coughs> religiosity? What do you think it is that, that steeps it so deeply in our ongoing philosophy on what democracy yeah. should be? That's a superb question, and my answer is this. Irving Kristol's wife, Gert, who writes under the name Gertrude Himmelfarb, who's still living and produces a book a year, she's a reproach to the rest of us, says there are two enlightenments. There was the continental, the French enlightenment, and the British enlightenment, of which the American enlightenment was a part. And they differ radically in the sense that the British enlightenment was empirical and temperate. The French enlightenment was a priori and severe. One gave rise to the uh, glorious revolution of 1688 and eventually the American Revolution. The French Enlightenment gave rise to the French Revolution and a bloodbath. And the differences in, I hate to go back to, I mean, this does sound like a philosophy seminar, but it's back to epistemology. What do we know and how do we know it? The French great believers in deductive reasoning and a priori reasoning the British in the tradition of Hume, skepticism which makes you inherently tentative about the fallibility of the sense data. It just builds a kind of temperateness into life, which no one ever accused the French of. 